CNC programming is about managing and controlling the path and use of cutting tools as they remove material. So, understanding how to manage and create these tools is key to the process. If you're going to follow along, open Assembly 3.0. There's no need to save it, we just need it open for the purpose of demonstration. Now, there are two main ways to access the tool library. One method is by selecting the library from the Toolpath Property Manager when you're creating a toolpath, while the other method is to select Tool Library from the CAM tab. So, to launch the library, let's go ahead and select Tool Library. With the Tool Library window now open, let's talk a little bit about libraries. At the top, we have all of your active SolidWorks files. If any of those files have tools associated with them, when you select them, the tools will be displayed on the right-hand side. Next on our list, we have a list of filters that filter all of the available tools, whether those tools be in an active SolidWorks file or one of the libraries. These filters are very useful when you're trying to find a tool for an operation. My Libraries are your custom saved libraries. Let's go ahead and create a new library by right-clicking and selecting New Library. I'm going to name my library Al's Tools. You can go ahead and name your library with your name. By default, this new library was created in the My Documents folder for the active Windows user. So when you create a new library within My Libraries, only you are going to have access to it. If another user logs on to the same workstation with another username, then they are not going to have access to this library. In a moment, I'll show you how to create a shared library for other users on this workstation or other users on a network. Sample libraries are the libraries that shipped with HSMWorks. These libraries have read-only access, so you can use the tools from within the library, but you can't change or add to them. Any tool you use in this course will be found in the CNC Fundamentals library. A moment ago, I told you that I was going to show you how to set up a shared library. So let's do that now. Shared libraries are set up by right-clicking and selecting Add Library Folder. When you're adding a library folder, you can map to a local folder on your workstation, or you can map to a location on a network drive so that all of the users within your network can have access to those libraries. That said, if you give access to a library to multiple users, it's very important that all of those users understand how the library is set up. A tool library is most useful when you can rest assured that when you select a tool from that library, all of the settings for the tool are correct. So when multiple users are creating tools within one library, you need to be sure that you trust what everybody else is doing. So it may be that you want to have some control over the library. Let's say, for example, you're a teacher or a department manager. You could map to a folder that students and coworkers have read-only access to using Windows permissions. In this manner, you can create a shared library, but control their ability to modify it. As one last note, tools can easily be copied from one library to another. Simply select the tool and select Copy or Control c Then just go to the library where you'd like to paste the tool and use Control v or right-click and select Paste. As a quick advanced note, an entire library can be exported to Excel by right-clicking it and selecting Export. In Excel, you can modify tools or even add tools and then import the library back into your tool libraries. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, I understand how I manage my libraries and how I can share them with multiple users, but how should they be organized? Well, that largely has to do with what type of work you do. But here are some pointers. 
If you always have the same tools in a machine, you may want to make libraries based on your machines. This will reduce the need to go out to the machine and see what pockets the tools are in when you're selecting a tool for a job. Or maybe there's several materials you're often using. It could be wise to create libraries based on the material being cut. This would limit the need to adjust speeds and feeds each time you select a tool. As a quick side note, if you use a tool to cut metal, you shouldn't use it to cut plastic afterwards. Even though they're the same tool when they come from the factory, once a tool has been used to cut metal, it's no longer going to produce a good finish on your plastic parts. So it's wise to have two physical tools of the same geometry, one for metal and one for plastic. With that said, in the next video we're going to look at how we actually create and modify these tools. You can leave your current SOLIDWORKS file open because we're going to be using it again in the next video.